The Civil War was tragic everywhere, but the war inflicted a unique brand of hardship on border state Kentucky. When the succession crisis tore the nation apart, Kentuckians faced especially challenging decisions. Business, family, and political ties pulled them towards both North and South. In an attitude that seems paradoxical from the perspective of the 21st century, the majority of Kentuckians wanted to preserve the Union and keep Kentucky in that Union, while also preserving the institution of slavery and keeping their slaves. The majority of white Kentuckians felt that way. Nobody consulted the black ones. Unable to resolve this dilemma and hoping to avoid the states becoming a battlefield, in 1861, Kentucky state government declared neutrality and professed its willingness to oppose any troops, Union or Confederate, who might march across the state's borders. The enormous pressures of the times doomed this peculiar policy to a quick end. President Lincoln established a Union Army recruiting camp at Camp Dick Robinson, and Confederate troops seized Columbus on the Mississippi River. Soldiers in blue occupied much of the state while men in gray manned a line across the southern portion of Kentucky. The government in Frankfurt took up the Union side and remained loyal to the Union for the rest of the war. Delegates to a convention in Russellville declared Kentucky's succession from the Union and formed a Confederate government for the state. So by autumn of 1861, Kentucky had a star on both flags. And Kentucky had soldiers in both armies. Estimates of the number of Kentuckians who enlisted vary greatly, but perhaps 40,000 joined the Confederate Army and about 100,000 joined the Union Army. Some 30,000 Kentuckians lost their lives. As the nature of the ongoing war changed, so did the attitudes of many Kentuckians. The enthusiasm for the Union espoused by the majority early in the war dimmed as Kentuckians saw the war goals of the Lincoln administration changing from just preservation of the Union to include the destruction of slavery. Thousands of black Kentuckians responded to Lincoln's call for African-American volunteers, a development that outraged Kentuckians fearful of disruption of racial relationships that had lasted for generations and of the economic cost of losing their human property. Slaveholding Kentucky kept its traditions alive as long as possible. Slavery remained perfectly legal in the state. The Emancipation Proclamation didn't apply here until the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution months after General Lee's surrender at Appomattox and the firing of the war's last gunshot. Many gunshots were fired in Kentucky during the four years of the Civil War. Especially tragic was the guerrilla warfare that pitted neighbor against neighbor and gave Kentucky a lasting reputation for thoughtless violence. The Civil War touched every community and nearly every home and family in Kentucky. Today, there are reminders of that war all across the state. The Kentucky Civil War Sites Association preserves many of the places associated with the war and explains them to a new generation of Americans. In a way, Kentucky's Civil War began in Western Kentucky when Confederate troops occupied and fortified Columbus on the Mississippi River. A bit further east is Sacramento, site of one of the first battles in Kentucky. Rising dramatically above southern Kentucky farmland at Fairview is the Jefferson Davis Monument, which marks the birthplace of the only president of the Confederate States of America. Only a hundred miles away, outside Hodgenville, Kentucky, is the birthplace of his great rival, Abraham Lincoln. Both armies moved up and down the strategic corridor from Bowling Green to Louisville. During the Great Kentucky Campaign of 1862, 
they met and clashed at Munfordville. The maneuvering armies even threatened Pleasant Hill, a religious community of Shaker pacifists. That campaign culminated in the little town of Perryman in western Boyle County. Here was fought the biggest battle ever in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The Confederate failure here secured Kentucky for the Union for the rest of the war. Just to the south of Perryville are battlefields where two of the most decisive battles of the war were fought. At Mill Springs, early in 1862, the Confederate Army suffered what many think was its worst battlefield defeat anywhere during the war. At Richmond, later that year, things were very different. On that battlefield, a Union Army was scattered across the countryside in a humiliating defeat. Not all of Kentucky's Civil War sites are battlefields. Just south of Lexington was Camp Nelson, a huge supply base that now tells the story of African-American recruiting in Kentucky. Scattered across central Kentucky are earthwork forts built to protect vital transportation lines and important towns. These can still be seen at Boonesboro near Winchester, in downtown Frankfort overlooking the state capitol, and at Fort Duffield near the modern-day Fort Knox military post. The mountains of eastern Kentucky made it hard for Civil War armies to maneuver there, but this did not shield the region from the war's violence and hardship. An early Confederate march into Kentucky ended in a battle atop rugged Wildcat Mountain. Future President of the United States, James Garfield, began his climb to fame in fighting at Middle Creek. And there was another battle at Ivy Mountain. The routes followed by cavalry raids by one Confederate general from Lexington, John Hunt Morgan, can be traced all across Kentucky. Morgan's men rode through many a Kentucky town, and they and their Union opponents fought hard at Tibbs Bend and Cynthiana. In nearly every Kentucky community, something reminds us of the Civil War. And our Civil War ancestors are themselves still with us in cemeteries everywhere, quiet places for reflection about the real human cost of war. But in Kentucky, the Civil War is not passive and dead. Visitors to our Civil War sites can come as close as is now possible to actually participating in the war. Hands-on programs, living history events, and reactments abound. You can smell the gunpowder, hear the roar of muskets and cannons, taste the hardtack, enjoy the music, see the horses, and even wear clothes like that of Civil War soldiers and civilians. Or you can volunteer to work on an archaeological dig or help restore a battlefield to its 19th century appearance. There's no better place to experience the Civil War than in Kentucky. The places touched by the war are preserved. They're easy to find, and they're allowed to tell their stories. Taken together, they tell a big story. In Kentucky, the Civil War is long over, but never forgotten. <laughs>